welcome back guys to the third episode of Unreal Engine 4 tutorial series when I'm, where I'm teaching you guys how to build stuff in game. So we have our preview of build, we can turn it on and off with the B key, but we can't actually build it. So let's build it. First what we need to do, we need to create this actor that we are going to spawn. So I'm going to go back to my content browser, build mode, and I'm going to create a new blueprint class. I'm going to click on this all classes and I'm going to search for static mesh actor. There we go. Select. And I'm going to call this buildable foundation. Now in here we have this static mesh component and when we click on it in here in the static mesh we need to search for our foundation. There we go. We have our foundation and that's going to be it for now. Now we can go back to our third person character and I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna comment this and I'm gonna call this build mode. Now it looks way nicer and on mouse left click I'm going to build my foundation. So I'm gonna right click and type left mouse button it's going to create an event and on mouse button clicked, pressed, I'm going to do a if branch to check whether our build mode is turned on. You probably, if you have already a game or something, you probably already have something on your left click. So you need to do this and you can continue your code from this false. But if the build mode is turned on, I'm going to do another branch check if we are allowed to build. So can we build? And if we can build, then now we can spawn actor from class. And here in the class, I'm going to search for my buildable foundation that we just created. And for spawn transform, I'm going to use my build transform. There we go. So now we can compile and save. And if we press play, press B, we have our foundation, we click and boom, there it is. So now we can spawn many of these. Be careful, don't get stuck because you might get stuck. <laughs> so there we go. Awesome. So what we can do now is we could try to actually stack these next to one another so that they would snap. So I'm going to open up my buildable foundation and I'm going to add a component and this is going to be a box collision component. I'm going to rename this to foundation one. And on the right side, don't change transform values, leave these at zeros and scale at one. And here in the shape of the box extent, we're going to type in the sizes. So my foundation is 400 by 400 pixels and here we need only the half size. So I'm going to type in 200, 200 and this I'm going to type like 16. Seems a bit small. So I'm going to type 20. Yeah, that's going to be good. Don't worry that it's half partially un under the ground. It's okay. Uh, the most important part is that it's it is a little bit on the ground because if it's under the ground we are not going to be able to hit it but since it's a little bit on on it then it's going to be all right if you want this to be higher you can make this higher because the only thing that this box is going to do it's going to detect whether we have hit it or we have hit it not so now I'm gonna drag this aside I'm gonna make this right next to it and I'm gonna select this, press Control W to duplicate it. I'm going to call this Foundation 2. And I'm going to move this to the other side. There we go. I'm going to create one more. I'm going to call this number 3. Put this in this side. I'm going to create one more. And I'm call this foundation four. 
Make sure you have it aligned nicely. And now I'm going to so click on the first one, hold shift, select all of them, all of these box collisions. I'm going to go down a little bit and here under the collisions tab, I want to set this collision preset to a custom. Because what I want to do now is I want to block this for the foundation build channel, but for our floor build channel and wall build channel, I want to ignore. So that we wouldn't have collision issues when we are building, let's say, a wall so that it wouldn't snap to this location, but only the foundation would. So I'm going to compile and save. Now we can go back to our third person character. And now we need a new function. And this function I'm going to call did we hit foundation. And in here we're going to need a few inputs. First one is going to be an actor. I'm going to call this an actor and I'm going to search for the object type actor. I'm going to add new parameter and this is going to be our component that we have hit. And this is going to be a primitive primitive component. Now we are going to drag from the actor and we are going to cast to our buildable foundation. And as this buildable foundation we need to get our foundation 1. We need to get foundation 2 and the next one and the last one. So now we have all of our box collisions here and we need to check these and we can drag from the first one type equal sign twice. We need to check the, if this object is equal to this component that we have hit. So I'm going to copy this and paste a few times for all of our foundations. Connect these first pins to the foundation. And here I'm seeing that it's getting a little messy so I'm going to hover over this line. I'm going to double click it and this is going to create a reroute no node which we can drag around. So I'm going to connect this one to the second results. There we go. Connect these a little bit more. So now we need to do a or boolean check. We have four, so we're going to make four pins. And this is going to check whether we have hit first one or second one or any of them. And we're going to drag from this end result and type if branch, connect this to our buildable foundation cast. And if we did hit any of these, what we need to do is we need to do a return node and we need a couple of outputs. So select this return node or the input node, whatever. And in the outputs, you need to add a transform, transform. And another one is going to be a return value. And these are going to be transform is going to be a transform and the return value is going to be a Boolean. So this is going to represent the location and this is going to represent whether we did hit something or we didn't. And for the transform, again, we need to drag from our component and we need to type in get world transform. Now we can connect this world transform to this transform and as a return value we need to set to true because we did hit one of these. Now for the false value we can type in again return node and leave this empty. And same thing for this if we failed to cast then we can return empty. So there we go. Now we can compile and save this. Now we can go back to our event graph and I'm going to make my build mode comment a little bigger. And now if we have hit something, I'm going to move this back a little like that. Looks good. And 
if we have hit something and the ghost build is valid we can do this did we hit foundation so connect this to is valid and this actor we need to get our hit actor from the hit result and hit component connect this to a component now I'm gonna move these back even more actually so now if now we need an if statement that's right so drag from return value type if connect this right here if we have hit our foundation then we need to set our build transform so connect this and set this build transform to a transform and connect this to make build ghost green but if we didn't hit anything just skip this set build transform and connect this directly to set build ghost green now we can compile and save basically what this does this will check if we hit one of these boxes and if we did hit one of these boxes it's going to give us the location of the box and it's going to set us a new build transform if it didn't we don't need to set a new one we can use the old one so now we can go to our game we can build so we have our first floor and on the second one you can see when we look next to it it like snaps to the location and if we let's say if we move you can see that it wants to move but it can't because it is forced to get stuck in that location it needs to snap there so that is going to be it for this video in the next video we are going to create a UI user interface and this user interface is going to allow us to select different types of buildable objects so see you guys in the next video Bye.